Hello, and welcome to the Future in Focus radio show starring Michael Vidikin, founder of the forward-thinking research firm, futureinfocus.com. He gives us access to one of the largest bodies of foresight research in the world. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, your co-host, proud to be helping companies understand the future so they can make better decisions today. So sit back and get ready to glimpse tomorrow. What will the next generation of stay-at-home dads look like? How will the millennials parent differently than their parents and grandparents? And how will the new American grandparents behave? Answers to those questions and more can be found in the information-packed briefs on Michael Vidikin's dynamic website, futureinfocus.com. A popular subscription-based strategic foresight and consulting firm, Michael helps companies see years or even decades into the future to make better long-term decisions today. His clients include Conagra Foods, GM, the Hershey Company, Nissan, and more. So we are thrilled to welcome Mike to his own new radio show, Future in Focus Radio, on the Incandescent Radio Network, and this will be the first of many interviews that Mike and I do with other futurists. But today, the spotlight is on Michael Vidikin, so welcome to your show. Thank you, Hope, and welcome everyone to the first uh, of many shows. Yes, very exciting. So before we jump in, Mike, I want to tell the audience a little bit about you and futureinfocus.com. So Michael Vidikin founded the firm in 2014, and this month, our team at Incandescent PR helped him launch his new monthly e-magazine, which features a different emerging business and consumer trend in each issue. This month, we focus on the future of fatherhood, which is really exciting, and I encourage you all to take a look at futureinfocus.com this month before July 1st when we go to the future of the workforce, featuring, featuring another futurist named Dr. Andy Hines. So Mike actually continues work previously done by another futurist think tank called Social Technologies. That one was founded in D.C. in 2000 by a futurist named Tom Conger. In 2009, he sold that company to another firm called Innovaro, which focused on software and innovation solutions. So now Michael has picked up the baton and is working it through Future in Focus. He is an MBA grad of the George Washington University, where he also earned his undergraduate degree in business and psychology. And when he's not focusing on the future, he can be found experimenting in the kitchen, testing out the latest interactive game technologies, or volunteering in his community and raising money for Movember, a global organization committed to changing the face of men's health, which is obviously wonderfully commendable. So Mike, you are the entrepreneur of the month in the June issue of my business magazine, BeIncandescent.com, and we talk about this topic that's also featured on yours. And thanks to you, we had the opportunity to focus on four briefs, which we pulled from your website. The next generation of stay-at-home dads was the first. Millennials in parenting is the second. The new American grandparents is the third. And then there's a couple others that people should definitely take a look at because that whole issue focuses on this topic of men, which is really, really cool. So now let's get down to it. Let's talk about Future in Focus. Mike, tell us, what is the mission of your company? Well, thanks, Hope. The mission of our company is really to help other companies and organizations become more informed about the future so that they can make better long-term business decisions. You know, the future is always murky, but that doesn't mean it's unknowable or that it's not possible to plan for it. And as the name of our company suggests, we want to put the future in focus and provide clarity and direction for companies and organizations so that they can really plan for what's coming next. That's very cool. So tell us, tell our audience, so for someone who doesn't know what a futurist is, you know, I think the immediate image is sort of your crystal ball seekers, suitors. Um, but what does a futurist do and how do they do it? Sure. A futurist is someone who presents ideas about what the future might or might not look like. It's not about making a point prediction, but really helping people think more about what the future might look like. The job involves a ton of research and writing. In fact, it's a lot like doing a puzzle. You put enough pieces together, you start to see the outline of an image. A good futurist also tends to be a good historian, because if you want to tell the story about the future, you need to understand how we got to the present. Furthermore, if you can see how quickly technologies are advancing, 
You might be able to approximately forecast when they might become mainstream and how they could impact various industries. So that's sort of one type of trend that you track. Tell us a little bit about your ideal clients. Our ideal clients, uh, you know, it's, it, it's actually pretty broad, the type of clients that we work with. Our research tends to be very consumer-centric. So we're looking at people's shopping habits, their, the reasons, uh, the, really the underlying drivers behind why they, they make the purchase decisions they do. And then we also look at a variety of trends that will impact the business community in two to 10 years, sometimes even as far out as 25 years. So companies that are, that are really interested in understanding the marketplace, really understanding consumers, the ones that are most interested in, in our research. And we cover a really broad spectrum of consumer and technology trends across all industries and geographies, from research about millennial food preferences to the future of 3D printing in China. So any, any company that's really trying to understand where consumers' values and attitudes and, and shopping preferences, how those are shifting, if they want to understand how those are shifting over the next decade, they're going to want to read our research. Absolutely, yeah. You know, I I'm, I love how you chunk it out in these trend reports that you separate them out by business trends, geographic trends, generational trends, and emerging trends. So people can look at the, I think it's 34 categories of different briefs, and then they're all divided up into these four things. So you can really get a good idea, no matter how you cut it, about what might be happening in a whole bunch of industries from Asia and Africa to to the millennials and the generations. It's just wonderful stuff. One of the things that a lot of companies do is they put on blinders and they fail to see what's going on outside of their industries. So part of what we're trying to do here is actually show them the trends that are happening outside of their industries, especially because those are likely to impact them. So, for example, a a hotel company might have seen Uber disrupting taxi cabs and limousine companies and thought, well, there's no way that Uber could disrupt us. So they didn't even pay attention to those trends. And then Airbnb pops up with the same exact type of model that is all part of the sharing economy. And now Airbnb is completely disrupting the the hotel industries, and they're trying to figure out uh, really whether to embrace it or uh, how to deal with it. So so I think it's really important for companies to – Look outside their industries. Look at look at trends that are going on really everywhere. Uh, what we cover really is going to impact society and businesses uh, across the spectrum. So amazing, so amazing. So, what are some of the trends that you report on that have surprised you the most? I'm probably most surprised by the advances in biotechnology. Every day, there seems to be a new headline about a breakthrough discovery that that may cure a disease, uh, could extend our lives, make us healthier and improve our performance. There, there's actually a field of researchers who are trying to grow human organs for transplants. It's, it's incredible. Uh, they're, they're actually growing uh, pancreases, livers, hearts in a lab. One day, those organs, uh, we, we might be able to actually grow our own organs in a lab and have those replaced later on if, if we need them. Uh, they're also trying to manufacture human blood for blood transfusions uh, in a lot of uh, cities. Hospitals uh, don't have enough blood, and, and it's really amazing that someday uh, these technologies could save thousands or even millions of lives. That is amazing. Plus, it wouldn't be infected. Yeah, that's really unbelievable. So how can more small businesses use the research that you do at Future in Focus? Well, I think they can use the research to see where the market is headed and use that information to tailor their products and services meet the future demands of consumers. Uh, some might want to abandon a doomed industry or market. You know, you don't want to be the, the last buggy whip maker. And then, of course, small advertising or consulting businesses who are supposed to be thought leaders for their clients. They also want to read our research so that they can present uh, these really amazing insights to their clients. Absolutely. So how does someone get into this business? What type of background and schooling is needed? So for some people, it's about an academic program that they got into. Uh, There's a few programs in the United States and more abroad that focus on strategic foresight and future studies. And these teach the basic principles 
methodologies, frameworks. One would need to analyze trends and create forecasts, uh, among other things. And for some, it's just circumstance that leads a person to become a futurist. Some started as researchers or scenario planners and then just follow their passion for thinking about the future and sharing those insights with others. Interesting. How did, how did you get into this business? For me, it was, uh, it was like the latter. So I, I took a, an amazing class uh, during my MBA program uh, with a futurist. His name is Bill Halal, and his course was on emerging technologies. And I was really lured in by the promise of learning about uh, artificial intelligence, space elevators, cancer-fighting nanobots, uh, other stuff that sounded like science fiction. And throughout the course, I learned that if you could plot the history of a technology's progression, you might be able to map its trajectory going forward and then see what potential impact and opportunities those technologies could create. Really, really interesting. I love that. So um, what excites you most about the work you're doing? Well, I, I would have to say that it's the opportunity to work with amazing companies and help them make decisions about what new products and services to offer. Um, it, it actually, uh, immediately after I finished the MBA, I, I was given this opportunity to work for Innovaro's Foresight Research Division. And some of the clients were BASF, Hershey's, GM, and these projects were really fascinating. We were looking at the culture of food, we were looking at the future of chemistry, we were looking at the future of transportation, and in all of these instances, we were trying to help them come up with new ways to serve their customers. And at the end of the day, that's, that's what really makes me happy, knowing that these businesses will be able to provide really great and amazing new products, services, and experiences for their, for their customers. Yeah, perfect. It makes really, really good sense, and it's all so interesting for on so many levels. So let's talk, before we let you go, about uh, the future of fatherhood. What is it that you find most fascinating about that? I would say that, to me, the most interesting aspect of fatherhood and, and how it's been changing is really the changing gender roles. Um, I think a lot of people can relate to their maybe their fathers, you know, were, you know, how much their fathers were involved when they were growing up. Um, and then they take a look at grandparents, you know, grandfathers today, as well as new fathers today. There's a different level of, of parenting um, among fathers today. They want to be much more involved with their children. Uh, in fact, there's, there's a whole group of stay-at-home dads. Uh, the, it's, it's only about half the, the size of stay-at-home moms, but it's quadrupled over the last decade. It's, there's actually a core group of men that really want to spend that time, spend more time with their children and be a, a strong part of, of raising them and educating them. Um, one of the, the other interesting trends is, is the fact that men are probably no tech obsessed, right? You know, every guy loves new technologies. We're always playing at uh, Home Depot and Lowe's and Best Buy and you know, looking at all the newest and latest gadgets. And so what's interesting is to see how these fathers are actually integrating all of this new technology into what they do uh, with their children. I've, I've heard stories about dads giving their kids walkie-talkies to, to stay in communication with them because they want to make parenting fun, and they also want to in incorporate those, those technologies to basically further their parenting. Make the kids really smart. It's very, very, very interesting. And that's just a little bit of what's on the website. Um, just to let our audience know, you can go and check any trend and see key findings, implications, business implications, and other just chunks of little bits of information that'll give you an idea about the brief um, or the topic. And then when you subscribe, you get access to 1,400 or, and more as, as time goes on, uh, research studies and you get the latest and the greatest. So that is super cool. So Mike, thank you so much. We're going to send as many people as possible to futureinfocus.com. Thank you so much for, for this doing this first episode of the Future in Focus radio show. Absolutely. And thank you for the opportunity. I, I just really want to encourage people to explore, get out there, get out, get outside of your comfort zone and think about things you don't normally get a chance to think about. Uh, it's, 
it's exciting and it, it really leads to new inspiration and innovation creativity. So, so get out there, look at those trends, and I'm very accessible, and if anybody wants to reach out to me, um, I'm happy to answer emails. I'm happy to get on a call and talk about the future really anytime. Perfect. That's Mike at futureinfocus.com. And the website obviously is futureinfocus.com. And that's it for the first episode of the Future in Focus radio show on the Incandescent Radio Network. So thank you again. And thank you to all of our listeners. Mike and I will talk to you soon. 